ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೆ ನಮಃ ನಮ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮಾತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಿತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಘೋರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾರಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾಚಾರಿಣೆ ಪಂಚಕೌಪತರುಭ್ಯಸ್ಯಾಪಸಿಂಧುಪೈವಚಿತನಂಭವಾನ್ಯಪ್ರಭುನಿಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಆನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಟೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಆನ್ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಂಟೈಟಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಕಿಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಡಿಮನ್ ಟ್ರಿನವಾರ್ಟ ರೆಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರೆಸ್ I think before we go on, let's just have a review of what we've covered. I began the class with the first lesson. We spoke about the birth of Lord Krishna, right? That was chapter number three. Anybody remember anything about the birth of Lord Krishna? Can you tell me something? Yes, Prabhu? Maharaj, the uh, constellations and stars were indicating auspicious positions and you also mentioned this could be a challenge to anyone who claims to be God. You yeah. can, we can see, see the astrological calculation and test, verify if that person is really an incarnation. Okay, very good. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, right. Okay, we spoke about the birth of Krishna and the auspicious conditions on the planet. Then we went on to chapter number four and we heard about the atrocities of King Kamsa. Maybe someone else could tell me something from chapter four about the atrocities of King Kamsa. Maharaj? Yes, Prabhu. Well, um, Kamsa began killing children everywhere. Who was, who, was, who, would, who was killing the children everywhere? Kamsa sent, sent to kill children everywhere. Uh, I... Yeah, he, they, they, they had a meeting, right, after... Well, first of all, we had... Uh, after the birth of Lord Krishna, Kamsa had gone to the prison where Vasudevan Devaki was in because he heard that the eighth child was born. So Kamsa went to the prison and he was very eager to kill the eighth child. Do you remember what happened? Um, well, he went to kill the eighth ch child, but then there was a daughter and Kamsa took, took her by the legs. and tried to smash her against a rock, but then she slipped out of his hands and climbed to the sky and appeared as Nazirga Devi and told him that the, the eighth son, well, the, the boy who is supposed to kill you has already been born somewhere else. Right. Yes. Yes. And then it was the next day, then Kamsa had the meeting with his lieutenants or his ministers and they encouraged, they between Vasudev and uh, Vasudev and Maharaj Nanda, right? And that took place where? Where did they meet? In Mathura. In Mathura, yes, right, they met in Mathura. Nanda Maharaj had gone there to pay taxis. And when they met, Nanda Maharaj Of course, before that, they celebrated the birth of Lord Krishna, and after Nanda Maharaj had celebrated the birth of Lord Krishna, then he thought he should go to Mathura and pay his taxes, 
and after paying his taxes, he met with Vasudeva. And Vasudeva warned Nanda Maharaj that you should get home as quick as possible because there may be some inauspiciousness, some inauspicious events may take place there. So it's good if you're there to take care of any problems. So Nanda Maharaj had great faith in the words of Vasudeva and he rushed back to Goku. And when he got back to Goku, that's when he got a big shock, right? What was the shock? Saputana dead already. Yes, he saw this huge body, miles long, on the ground, like a mountain. So he wondered what had been going on. And so he, he heard from the people how this Putana had come in and done her n n nefarious activities there, trying to kill baby Krishna with her poison breast. So that was the class yesterday. We heard about Putana and how she was delivered. And what position did she get? What happened to her after Krishna took out her life air? Nurse. Yes, she became a nurse. Where? In the spiritual world. Which place? Oh, no, in Golok, right, in Golok, right. She went, she got to Golok. So that was showing us the power of bhakti. What bhakti did she do? She dressed like a gopi and she's offering her milk to Lord Krishna. Yes. And what about her at the time of her death? At the time of her death, she's suffering a lot, very painful. Why? Because Krishna is sucking her life air out of her breast, and also Krishna touched her body with his feet. Yeah, he kicked her. <laughs> he's kicking her with his feet. <laughs> she's trying to get him off. He's kicking her and he's holding her breast. <laughs> so she's blessed. She got the, the dust of Lord Krishna's lotus feet at the time of her death. So, she got a very wonderful destination by the grace of Krishna. So, we're going to go on today to chapter number 7. And chapter number 7 is the killing of the demon Trinavarta. So, the chapter begins with Maharaj Parikshit expressing his desire, he wants to hear more, that he's really, well, he thinks this is really wonderful when he heard about how Krishna killed the demon Agasura, who, who was really happy. And he thought, these pastimes of Lord Krishna are so wonderful. And he thought, I want to hear more about Krishna's childhood lila, because these pastimes are so relishable. Of course, you've already studied the Damodar Lila, right? You already went ahead to do those chapters. I think last week you did Damodar Lila, isn't it? Yes? Uh -huh. So that was also Krishna's childhood pastimes, and I'm sure you relish that. So, some time to get to the tenth canto, and so Maharaj Parikshit knows his time is very near, the, the pastimes of Lord Krishna. He thinks it will be very nice to hear more about the pastimes of Krishna. Uh, Prabhupada makes some points in the purport. He, he talked, Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about our problems, he's writing for our benefit. He said, first of all, however, we have no attraction for hearing about Krishna. And this is the root cause of our suffering. And Lord Chaitanya also talks about this in the Shikshastikam. Do you remember? Lord Chaitanya said, we are so unfortunate, we have no attraction. The second... 
Yes. Yes. Durdaiva midrishami hajanin. Durdaiva. Right. We're very unfortunate. We have no attraction for the holy name. Although Krishna has given us so many wonderful names to chant, we have no attraction. And Krishna has also performed so many wonderful pastimes. But still, there are so many people they don't want to hear. So this is the problem. Ma However, Maharaj Pariksit specifically mentions the wonderful activities of baby Krishna, which amazed Mother Yashoda and the other inhabitants of Braja. And uh, these are especially attractive. So, therefore, Maharaj Pariksit recommends one hear about Krishna Krishna's childhood activities, more because they are more attractive than the activities of other incarnations, such as Machya, Kurma and Varaha. Wanting to hear more and more from Sukadeva Goswami, Maharaj Parikshit requested him to continue describing Krishna's childhood activities, which are especially easy to hear and which create more and more inquisitiveness. So inquisitiveness, this is a very good quality. We should be of Jignasu, right? Four kinds of people come to Krishna consciousness. One is the inquis out of inquis being curious, inquisitive. And so it's a good thing. We should be more curious, more inquisitive about the pastimes of Krishna. Oh, Krishna did that? Oh, who was this? And how did that happen? It's very interesting for us to hear, we become more inquisitive and that may, that's enlivening for everyone. We try to encourage that inquisitive understand more. And Prabhupada, when he, Prabhupada met that one kid, uh, he, Prabhupada was in Mayapur and this one, one young American man came and he met with Srila Prabhupada. And every day the young man had so many questions and Prabhupada said that, that this, this could make a book and they printed the book, Perfect Questions, Perfect Answers. And here we see, all of, actually all of our Shastras are based on questions and answers. Bhagavad Gita, you've got Arjuna putting questions to Krishna and here in the Srimad Bhagavatam you've been hearing a lot of questions. We had the sages in Naimisharanya with Sonakarishi, and we had uh, also, of course, Maharaj Pariksit put questions to Sukadeva Goswami, and Vidura put questions to Uddhava, and then to Maitreya. So a lot of questions. And you've got also Maharaj Yudhisthira questioning Narada Muni, and, and Narada Muni questioning Brahma, all these things. It's, the whole Bhagavatam is full of questions and answers. So it's, imp it's also good for us to uh, hear about Krishna's pastimes and continue that inquisitiveness. We want to enrich our own understanding by discussing. This is the business of devotees. To shanti chara manti The thoughts of my devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered unto me. And they derive great satisfaction and bliss by enlightening one another and conversing about me. So meeting together every day is very nice to have this opportunity to discuss topics of Krishna. And the wonderful thing about Lord Krishna is because he's appearing on this planet Earth and he's imitating a human child. But at the same time, he's performing these wonderful activities. So this is brought up in text number three, that these pastimes are very wonderful because he's coming onto this planet. And Prabhupada actually writes there, in, in the purport there, he says, uh, but on other planets, the inhabitants are more advanced. And therefore, the pastimes the Lord performs there are still more wonderful. Krishna's appearance about him. So what makes us more fortunate than the demigods in the higher planets? Krishna's 
Krishna personally took birth here in the earthly planet. Yes. So that means, but Krishna also takes, does Krishna take birth in the higher planets? No, he does. He does? Yes. No. Huh? No, no, no. Yes, Maharaj, he does. Like uh, Vaman Dev appeared in the Swarga. Yes, Lord Vamana Dev appears up in heavenly planets. But that's not Krishna. What about Lord Krishna? When Lord Vamana Dev appears, does he appear in the form of a demigod? No. No, he's a, he's a dwarf Brahmana. What about, so there's definitely some special uniqueness about the, the, the appearance of Lord Krishna on this planet because he appears in the human form, a form similar to ours. Even the people on Vaikuntha, they don't have that opportunity. It, it's different there. We see Lord Krishna coming in, our, in, in the human form. Of course, we are made in the form of Krishna. Krishna's original form is too armed. Sometimes people think God, we make God in our form, but actually Krishna, He's made us in His form. We have taken the form like Krishna. It's not that Krishna took a form like us, but we have taken a form like Krishna. Because we come on this planet, we're all thinking, I want to be God anyway. <laughs> so Krishna gives us the body, but He doesn't give us the, the spiritual body. But Lord Krishna comes to show us his wonderful pastimes, and that makes us very fortunate, more fortunate than the people in the higher planets. Okay, going ahead, text number four, and we hear about Mother Yashoda, she's going to do a Vedic ceremony for her child, right? It's called Uttana. Do you do this in your Hindu society? Srinivas Prabhu, have you heard? On the last day of the Chaturmasya, like today, at the end of Chaturmasya, the last day, then they, they have this Uttana, the raising of the deity. Because they say, like Krishna takes rest during the four months, or Lord Vishnu takes rest during the four months of Chaturmasya. So at the end of the Chaturmasya, they do this Uttana ceremony, where the, de the deity ra rises. But in this particular case here, they talk, Prabhupada talks about, about after three months, when the child starts to turn by himself, that the child can actually turn onto his side by himself. So that's when they do this Uttana ceremony. And it's only the married ladies who do it. You're a brahmachari, so you wouldn't know anything about this, you know. This, it, it's mentioned here, it was only the gopis, the married ladies, those who could have, la have children or who already had children, they would all come and they would do a ceremony at this particular time. Maharaj, in our uh, culture we do, we take the child to the temple and then later on we take them to the other houses or... Yes, that's right. It said, uh, it said on the fourth month, at the end of the three months, at the beginning, that's when the child can come out of the house. Right? Did you stay, did yes, you stay at home for yes, three Maharaj, months? That is when they take them to the temple and do some ritual. How long do you wait before you go to the temple? I'm not very sure, Maharaj. I don't know much details on that. Yeah, some... we, wait, we wait for three months, uh, Maharaj. Really? You wait for three months? Yeah, after three months we take the child. It's mentioned, the it's mentioned here like that, three months, yeah, or three, three four months. Yeah, some, some time... And then also when the child turns over, then uh, we have a festival. And then when the child starts crawling, we have a festival. And then when the child crosses over out of the house, no crosses, uh, uh, then also we have a festival for no. the child. Oh, wonderful. You do all these things. So you did all these things for your children. Yeah. Very nice. And so, very fortunate. Rohini was in the same constellation as the moon, so it's very auspicious. And she got the Brahmins to come to chant Vedic mantras and musicians also. So it was a big ceremony by Mother, uh, arranged by Mother Yashoda for the ladies. 
And Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about different ceremonies which we should do for the children. He says, he said, just like when the woman's pregnant, then after three months pregnancy there's a ceremony, and then after seven months in another ceremony. And he, he talks about how to do it even. He said there's a ceremony, the mother observes by eating with neighborhood children. <laughs> You get the neighboring children to come and the mother eats with them, feeds the children. This ceremony is called Swada Bhakshana. And then other different samskaras are there for the child. So these samskaras, they're all for the purification for the child and to create auspiciousness and prosperity. So very nice, we want, we want to encourage these things. We see from our Krishna Consciousness Movement, people become more aware of these things now. Things like, you know, anaprashna, of course that's after the child is born, but still gradually more and more, you know, get them started. And we learn about the different ceremonies, it's very nice. But you need brahmanas to also do these things, you have to have some brahmanas. This. So text 5 describes more about this Uttana ceremony. Mother Yashoda is going to do the bathing of the baby. And the brahmanas, they get also charity. You know, the, the, the type of charity they got then, different from what we could do nowadays. But, you know, in the times of Mother Yashoda, they would give the brahmanas cows and food grains and eatables, clothing. So this ceremony was performed very gorgeously. It satisfied everyone and all the ladies were very happy to see the child healthy. So Mother Yashoda, she was busy taking care of all the guests and she's giving people different charity and, you know, because it was her child, so everybody's uh, some kind of friend of hers. So she has to speak to everyone and she has to take care of the brahmanas and do different, give different charities to different people. So what happened? She'd put baby Krishna down. Baby Krish Krishna had like taken rest. After she bathed him, then they, they, they put, dressed him and laid him down to take rest. So she put him in a cot and she placed that cot under, a, under a, a, what's it called, the cart. Under the, and, and that cart was a cart or bullet cart or something. So this was a big cart. And it's mentioned actually, it said it was this as big as a tala tree. I don't know tala trees, but, but from the way it's used, I understand it to be quite tall. So she put baby Krishna in, her, in his cart and she placed him under this cart, which was really big. And the cart was full with many different uh, containers, different vessels. The commentaries say that the cart was carrying different things, dairy products, that means there was ghee and cheese and yogurt and milk, it was, it was all there on the cart, these different liquids. And Krishna, baby Krishna was placed underneath that cart while Mother Yashoda went away to t talk to all the guests. So it was at that time when Krishna was laying down there under the cart, it said, we're told that Krishna desired to drink his mother's milk. And when the child doesn't get what they want, you know, a little child, what will they do? They'll cry and they'll kick their arms and legs, wave their arms and legs. So baby Krishna was crying, but Mother Yashoda couldn't hear him because there were so many people around, because of the festival was going on. Musicians were playing and the brahmanas were chanting and all the guests were there. 
So Mother Yashoda was really busy. She couldn't hear baby Krishna crying. So Krishna kicked his legs. And when he kicked his legs, then he kicked that cart. And that cart actually, on that cart, there was a particular demon called Shakatasura. Shakatasura, another agent of Kamsa, who had come there with the intention of trying to harm or give, give some trouble to baby Krishna. So there's an interesting story about Shakatasura. We were talking yesterday, some, one of the devotees was expressing that, uh, that it seems the, the mother Puta, that Putana got liberation very easily. Although she didn't really have so much devotion that she got liberation very easily. So then it was brought up that we have to understand who she was in her previous life and what she must have done to get that position of Putana and to take part in Lord Krishna's pastimes and to be killed by Lord Krishna. So similarly, the Shakatasura, he was a special demon, right? Does anybody know who was this Shakatasura? Son of the Mother Earth, right? Sorry? Was it the son of the of Bhumi? The son of Bhumi? Really? Maybe not. No, maybe not. I, I, I think I... Kaksha. And he was known, his name was Utkacha. So he was, his name was Utkacha. So what happened was uh, he got cursed by Loma Sharishi. That he did not, he did not give, oh, no, what happened was he, he knocked down a lot of trees and he broke a lot of trees. So Lomasha was angry at him for breaking these trees. So he cursed, he cursed this Utkacha that he should, that he should not have a body, that he would not have any, any body. So then this person, he fell at the feet of Lomasha and he begged him that please, please, that don't curse me like this. So he said, all right, you will have a body of air. And he said, you will stay in this body until the next Manvantara. And at that time you'll be liberated by the feet of Lord Krishna, by the feet of the Supreme Lord. He will come and liberate you by the touch of his feet. So that, that was how it was described in the, the commentaries which I've been reading. So we, we see, you know, <laughs> he's a demon, he's got the demon body, but previously he wasn't a demon, but he made some offense and somehow didn't get the mercy. This Lomasha cursed him. And when they curse, okay, they get, there's some curse, but some good thing comes of it. Of course, he was, he said he was the son of Haranyaksha. Haranyaksha was a demon, so he was born in that family. But still, Prahlad was also born in a similar family, son of Haranyakashipu. So, contact with the great sage, that's the, the blessing. So this Shakatatsura he had contacted in his previous life, he had contacted Lomasha, and Lomasha had cursed him. So Shakatatsura, he, he doesn't actually become a cart. It's not that the demon became a cart, but rather he took the opportunity of the cart. He, he, he covered the cart. It's mentioned here in the first, first sentence that Krishna had been placed underneath a household handcart, but this handcart was actually another form of the Shakatasura, a demon who had come there to kill the child. So 
it's mentioned that Sakatasura actually doesn't actually become the cart, but he covers the cart. It has form like, you know, just like you can put a layer over, over the cart. So like that, his body was covering the cart. And when Krishna kicked the cart, he was actually kicking this Shakatasura. And the commentary goes on to describe the Shakatasura when he was touched by the feet of Lord Krishna, then he was of Lord Krishna. So he was able to go back to Godhead. So this is the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Krishna wanted to draw the attention of his mother. But by doing so, he created a great havoc, not understandable by ordinary persons. So Krishna created a big scene by knocking the car apart, although he's just a little baby, and his feet are very soft. Just a little baby, small child, feet are very soft, and he touches the car, and just by the touch of his feet, the car all falls apart, although it's carrying so many heavy things. But Krishna is unharmed. Miraculously, there was no harm done to anyone. Just all the things which were on the cart, they were all knocked everywhere. So everything was knocked around. So Prabhupada comments there at the end of the purport of number six. These narrations are actually so enjoyable and enlightening that Maharaj Parikshit and Sukadeva Goswami took pleasure in them and other liberated persons following in their footsteps become fully jubilant by hearing about the wonderful activities of the Lord. So this is what we all want to do. We want to continuously hear, we want to absorb ourselves in hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, very important for us, very powerful message. Any comments from anyone so far? We'll go ahead. Text number seven. Lord Krishna was laying down in the courtyard. The wheels had all broken apart. The utensils were all scattered hither and thither. Everybody, Mother Yashoda and the other ladies, Nanda Maharaj, the other men, they were wondering what happened? What happened? How could it do like this? And they were, and there were some boys, young boys there. So the young boys, they had actually seen Krishna use his feet and flay his feet and kick the cart with his feet. So they said, Krishna did it. That baby Krishna, he, he did it with his feet. But Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, the gopis, they said, oh no, come on. That's ridiculous. How could the little baby do this? They didn't want to believe it. They wouldn't accept that baby Krishna had actually done this. So this is a wonderful pastime which took place, the killing of Shakatasura, how he was liberated by the touch of Lord Krishna's lotus feet. Anyway, it was a mystery that, you know, so many things, so many objects on the cart had all been knocked over. So it was like another Another, another calamity had happened. And Lord Krishna is involved. This child Krishna is involved. Text number eight, number nine describes how the, they're, they're, spe they're thinking, how could, how could this happen? Who did it? Is it the work of some demon or evil planet? And that's when they ask the small children. As soon as the crying baby got, had kicked the car, the car had collapsed. There was no doubt about it. But <laughs> Nanda Maharaj, they cannot believe this. They won't accept this. The little boys are saying, they're saying these little boys, that they, they're, they're, they don't know. It couldn't be like that. So we have to understand these things properly. 
we have to understand the nature of Lord Krishna's pastimes, how Lord Krishna, even though he's a little baby, still he has these transcendental, inconceivable powers and can do anything which is beyond the powers of our own mind and senses. Prabhupada comments at the end of the purport of text number 9, unless one is on the spiritual platform, one cannot enjoy the transcendental activities of Krishna. Or, in other words, whoever engages in hearing the transcendental activities of Krishna is not on the material platform, but on the transcendental spiritual platform. So Srila Prabhupada used to take so much pleasure in hearing the Krishna book. When he was in Los Angeles, he would sit in his garden there and he would have his servant come and read to him. And Prabhupada would enjoy hearing the pastimes of Lord Krishna. And when Prabhupada would hear the narrations, Prabhupada would say to, he would remark, he said, I have not written this book. I have not written this book. It's all been written by Krishna through me. Krishna used me to write this book. It's certainly the most wonderful book in narrating all the pastimes of Lord Krishna. So the gopis and Nanda Maharaj, they, they, they remember, they have so much prema. They, they're not like Devaki and Vasudev who have this Aishwarya Gyan. Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda, the gopas and the gopis, they're all prema bhaktas. They have this pure bhakti and they cannot believe that Krishna has inconceivable powers. They think, oh, it's a little baby, how could he have these powers? He's just a little child, he's just only three, four months old. So they didn't want to accept what these young boys were saying. So Mother Yashoda, she, what does she do when she sees her child? She just simply picks him up and feeds her breast milk to him. Because she has so much love for her child, so her breasts are always flowing with milk. It said her clothes were always wet because her milk was always flowing from her body due to her love for her child. And then she calls for the brahmanas. Just like when the incident happened with Putana, they got the brahmana, they did so many, well the ladies themselves did the rituals. They, they got the, cow, the tail of the cow and they chanted so many mantras and they bathed the child. Remember, we heard yesterday they bathed the child in cow urine and then they got the dust raised from the hooves of the cows. So here, this, on this occasion, Mother Yashoda calls the Brahmanas because they're already there. Remember, they were doing the Uttana ceremony. So the Brahmanas had, were already there. So Mother Yashoda asked the Brahmanas to chant Vedic hymns and do some ritualistic ceremonies just to create auspiciousness. And then they have to pick everything up. Oh, it's mentioned then they did also a fire sacrifice to, to appease the, black, the bad planet. And then with rice, grains, kusha, water and curd, they worshipped the Supreme Lord. Of course, they don't know that their child is the Supreme Lord. They are thinking the Supreme Lord is the deity or Lord Vishnu. They cannot understand that Lord Krishna himself, their child, is actually the Supreme Lord. This is because of their bhava, because they have this very intense, deep bhava for Lord Krishna. Okay, going ahead. Text 13 to 15 talks about the qualities of the brahmanas. Who is actually a qualified brahmana? Now, this is important for us. The important point is because we're, we're all devotees in the Krishna consciousness movement. And people will often ask us for blessings, right? I'm sure you've all been asked at some time that people will say to you, well, give me your blessings. Even sometimes other devotees will say, give me your blessing, bless me. 
And so we're often asked for blessings. So what kind of blessings should we give? Yes, Prabhu? Yes, right. That's the right answer. That's how it's described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. <clears throat> that we, <coughs> we should bless people. May your mind be on Krishna. That is the blessing we want to give to people. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would give blessings to people, he would always bless them like that. Krishna Matir Vashtu. May your mind be on Krishna. It's important to know because it's our duty to give blessings. Devotees, Brahmanas, this is the marriage season. So people at the time of marriage also, people, couples come, they want blessings. So we bless them also. May your minds always be on Krishna. That's a nice blessing to give to people. So this, uh, this purport, Prabhupada is quite a long purport here, text 13 to 15, talking about the importance of brahmanas, that we should have pure brahmanas, and the blessings of a brahmana. He says, the blessings of qualified brahmanas can bring happiness not only to Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but to everyone. <laughs> Could you imagine giving blessings to Krishna? <laughs> we think Krishna should bless me. But here, in this situation, the brahmanas have come and they're giving the blessings to Krishna. Nanda Maharaj thought that Krishna required the blessings of the brahmanas. He wants that his child will be prosperous, that his life should be... And he knows the blessings of the brahmanas will greatly benefit the child. So it's important to uh, get the blessings of brahmanas and sometimes we are asked, we have to give blessings. If people ask us, yes, yes, may your mind be on Krishna, right? So the qualification Prabhupada discusses, the symptoms of a brahmana, he quotes Bhagavad, Asrima Bhagavatam, 7th Canto, Narada Muni, the symptoms of a brahmana are stated in Shastra. One must be qualified with these symptoms. And then Prabhupada goes on to discuss the different qualifications. He talks about danta, one who is non-envious, who does not disturb and is not puffed up with false prestige. So brahmana should be they should be Vidya Vinaya, described in Bhagavad Gita, Vidya Vinaya, learned and gentle. They shouldn't be harsh, they shouldn't be uh, aggressive, they should be gentle, without false prestige. That's important for the Brahmanas. And then Prabhupada, in the purport, he says, Therefore, in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, those who are twice initiated so as to become brahmanas must bear in mind their great responsibility to be truthful, control the mind and senses, be tolerant, and so on. This is the duty of devotees, twice initiated devotees especially, that we have to show people the example. Sense control, control of the mind and sense, and be tolerant. I was with one, I was with a group of devotees one time and we were doing Harinam Sankirtan and one of the devotees who was in the, in the Sankirtan party, he suddenly, he, he went wild and he started attacking a group of people who were watching us. And so I, 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 I managed to get him back and said, what are you doing? And he said, I could not tolerate. <laughs> I said, you could not tolerate? What, what do you mean you could not tolerate? He said, they're, they're, they were looking at us, they were laughing at us, 
They were talking bad about us. I said, you could not tolerate that. I said, my goodness. I said, well, this is not very good. If you can't tolerate these things, you shouldn't come out here on Sankirtan. You go out there, if we go out for preaching, we have to expect sometimes we'll get the, these kind of problems. Right? We're representatives of Srila Prabhupada. So it's very important, just like sometimes we, uh, in the times of the uh, 1960s and 1970s and especially, uh, people were doing book distribution and sometimes they would do it quite aggressively. And sometimes people would even come to see Prabhupada and they would complain that, you know, your devotee did this or did that. And Prabhupada would say to them, I am very sorry. Prabhupada would apologize to them. Prabhupada didn't do anything, but he said, yeah, they're my disciples. He said, I am very sorry. So I'm responsible for them. So very, we, how careful we have to be to properly present the Krishna consciousness movement. So Prabhupada then goes on, he said, Nanda Maharaj invited good brahmanas to come to his home, not ordinary Jati Brahmins, but he invited people who were real Brahmins who could chant the Vedic hymns and they could uh, strictly follow the religious principles. He didn't just invite people because they were born in Brahmana families. Of course, taking birth in a Brahmana family, it can be an advantage. It's not a, dis not a disqualification. It's an advantage if you take advantage of it. But birth alone is not enough. We get a lot of people come to our movement. They're born in Brahmana families. But they don't do the, the work of the Brahmins. They should actually work like a Brahmin. Not just only say, I am Brahmin. If you're a Brahmin, you have to work like a Brahmin. The Brahmin's duty means that we should worship the deities and teach others to worship the deities and we should study Shastra and teach the Shastra and we can give charity and we can accept charity. So it's often said, actually, uh, Kavi Karnapurna, he said, in the Kali Yuga, the Brahmanas are expert in only one of these six things. Right? They're expert in only one of these arts. What, which one do you think it is? Taking charity. Yes, right. That's it. Very, very expert in take, taking charity. Okay. And then the rest of the purport, at the end of the purport, Prabhupada said, the most important word in these three verses is Mahaguna, Mahagumam indicating that the brahmanas were offered very palatable food of exalted quality. So Prabhupada was very particular about the quality of our prasadam. You know, when we would di distribute prasadam, Prabhupada would always say, bring me a plate. I want to see what you're distributing. If Prabhupada was there at a program, maybe a Sunday program or maybe some hall outside and we were distributing prasadam, Prabhupada would say, let me see what prasadam you're giving. And Prabhupada would taste it and he would check the quality and he would let us know. If it was not good, he would tell us. He was very concerned that the prasadam must be very good, must be very palatable, of exalted quality. And even sometimes devotees would cook things like Prabhupada was in Los Angeles one time and the devotees had made some sweets, but they'd made the sweets with some kind of Western things, ingredients were all Western things, I think maybe some, maybe it was marzipan or chocolate or something like this, and they had made this sweet. And Prabhupada said, what is this? He said, why don't you make the sweets I've showed you? He said, I showed you how to make sweets. You should, you should make those kind of sweets. Don't just concoct and make all these things. 
So Prabhupada, we were really particular, very concerned. We wanted that the, the prasadam should be very good because Lord Krishna has to accept it. Lord Krishna is going to eat it. And of course, we are also the kitchen religion, right? We are the kitchen religion for me. I remember different sannyasis cooking, make samosa, make bada, uh, bara, uh, dai, dai wada, like that. And Prabhupada would, when they brought it, Prabhupada would say, oh, you could do a bit more of this or a bit more ghee in the dough or something like this. Uh, the filling's not quite right. I remember one devotee, one sannyasi, he was cooking samosas for Prabhupada and Prabhupada would tell him all the things what he needed to do to improve the quality of the samosas. <laughs> so Prabhupada was training everyone because Prabhupada himself was an expert cook and he wanted, it, it's, it's an art, it's a Vaishnava art and we should be able to cook nice things. And so Prabhupada says, still today in India, from these two things, two things, namely food grains and milk, hundreds and thousands of varieties of food are prepared and then they are offered to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So very important for us and then Prabhupada goes on talking about the different tastes which are there, sweet, salty, sour, pungent, and then food that can be licked, chewed, swallowed, sucked, different varieties, right? So many different varieties and tastes are there. When one is expert cook, then they can prepare these different kinds of food. So this is a, the duty of the Krishna consciousness movement, that we should prepare very attractive, very tasty, very pleasing food for people. And then Prabhupada finishes the purport by talking about how people take advantage of the cows, they want to kill the cows. Instead of using the cows to give milk or to provide good things, to produce grains and so on, they kill the cow. So Prabhupada said, uncivilized men living in the jungle and being unqualified to produce food by agriculture by agriculture and cow protection, they may, they may eat animals. But a human society advanced in knowledge must learn how to produce first-class food simply by agriculture and protection of cows. So this is the principle. Agriculture, land, very important. Prabhupada said this will be the big problem in the, in the future, in the years to come. There won't be enough food and people won't know how to grow food or how to produce food. So he was very concerned that the farms were very important, that we should have farms and we should produce our own food. He liked very much if we could produce our own grains and vegetables. Didn't like that we have to depend on others to get everything. Certainly, you eat grains grown by karmis, you get karma. So we should try to, it's very beneficial. Prabhupada said, farming is the most pious profession. Okay, going ahead, text number 16, talking about uh, Nanda Maharaj gave the brahmanas charity, he gave them cows well decorated with gold and the cows they were giving, they were not old cows and they were giving ample milk, they were not dry cows but they were giving a lot of milk. We see sometimes people they have a herd of cows, they don't get any milk, they're not getting any milk. It's not supposed to be, we, we don't take care of the cows. So the brahmanas, they were given the cows and they were happy and they gave more blessings upon the family. That's what you want. They were expert in chanting Vedic hymns and they were all yogis, fully equipped with mystic powers. 
mystic powers in every action with other members of society, brahmanas are certainly dependable. In this age, however, one must take into account that the brahmanas are uncertain in their qualification. Because there are no yajnic brahmanas, all yajnas are forbidden. The only yajna we can do in Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga Dharm Hari Nam Sankirtan. That is the real yajna for this age. All other yajnas, just a show, no real meaning. But life is meant for yajna. And yajna is done by chanting the Maha Mantra. So we are teaching people how to do this simple yajna. All right, going ahead, text 18. One year after Krishna's appearance. So we had, after three months there was Uttana ceremony and then Krishna's coming out of the house. And now, one year after Krishna's appearance, Mother Yashoda was patting her son on her lap. But suddenly, she felt the child to be heavier than a mountain peak, and she could no longer bear the weight. It was a sudden thing. Usually, she'd be, the child would be in her lap. But Lord Krishna's omniscient, and he understood that this demon is coming. Which demon? Trinavarta. Trinavarta. Trinavarta, right. And he's going to come and he's, he's going to pick up Lord Krishna. Right? Trinavarta. Trinavarta, then what form is he in? Whirlwind. Yeah, whirlwind. He's a whirlwind, right, in the form of a whirlwind. Now, he also has an interesting history. Jalangi. Yes. What's the history in Trinavarta? Who was he? Trinavarta was before, um, like the first life, they were Gen Yaksha and Gen Kasipu, and then they become Ravana and Kumbhakarna. In the third life, they become Trinavarta and Dantavakra. But I'm not sure which one is Jaya, which one is No, Vijaya. no, no, no. That's no. not, that's not Trinavarta. The Jai and Vijay, they became Sishupal and Dantavarka. This is uh, Trinavarta. This, oh, sorry, Maharaj. This is Trinavarta, right? Trinavarta. Trinavarta is different. Yeah, it's mentioned in the commentary that I was reading about Trinavarta, his history, that in his previous life, he was a king and he was a devotee of Hari, and he would do yagyas. But, you know, he's a king, so he enjoys, he was enjoying with women. His name was King... Uh, king S uh, Sila, Sila Saksha. I wrote it down. King Salashaksha. Anyway, he was he was he's a king and he was enjoying with women in the Muni. So Darvasa Muna cursed him. He cursed him to become a demon. Because he did not give proper attention to Darvasa Muni is like that, you know, he's powerful and he can curse people without much reason. Everybody was very careful about Durvasa Muni. So he cursed his king, but he told them, he said, you will be delivered by, you'll get delivered by the, the grace of when Lord Krishna's body is touching you, by the touch of Lord Krishna's body, you will be delivered. When the Supreme Lord comes, he will deliver you, he will liberate you from this curse of being the demon. So, the Garga Samhita says he was the king Sahasraksha, Sah a powerful king of Pandu Desha. 
Ah, Sahara, Sahasraksha. Thank you, Manaji. Sahasraksha. Yes. Powerful king of where? Pandu Desha. Yes. And when will he get delivered? Yeah, by the touch of Krishna's form. By the touch of Lord Krishna's form. Right. This is mentioned in the Garga Samhita. Garga Samhita actually was translated by Dhanavir Goswami. There's a, it's available. You can get it in the, probably you can get it over here in Mayapur. Dhanavir Goswami translated and published it. Garga Samhita. He, he did the translation himself and wrote the commentaries. He thought it's a very interesting book. So we see, anyway, it's mentioned there, as Maharaji said. So this was a history about Trinavarta. So Lord Krishna understands this demon Trinavarta is going to come. He's coming nearby. So Lord Krishna arranges to become very, very heavy. So heavy that Mother Yashoda couldn't bear the weight. So Mother Yashoda put him down. Instead of keeping him on her lap, she put him down. Why did Krishna become heavy? Yes, Maharaj do you know? Why did Krishna become so heavy? What's his purpose? So that Mother Yashoda could put him down? Yes. Why, did, why does he want Mother Yashoda to put him down? He didn't want her to get hurt. Right, that's right. That's the point. Right. He doesn't want anything to happen to Mother Yashoda because Mother Yashoda is his prima bhakta. And so he knows this demon, this Trinavarta is coming and he's going to pick up baby Krishna. He's, it's a whirlwind. So Trinavarta was thinking he'd come and kill both of them. But Lord Krishna doesn't want Mother Yashoda to go up there in the air. It's all right for Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is just in the form of a little baby. So the demon will carry him and this whirlwind demon, whirlwind, he, it's described dust and uh, dust and sand, like the dust, dust and dirt, everything gets picked up in the whirlwind. So it said, he's a, he's a representative of the mode of passion and ignorance. Uh. So, so this Trinavarta is the mode of passion and ignorance because it brings up so much dust and dirt, it's all flying everywhere and sand and everything. And it, it created such a commotion when that whirlwind came in Vrindavan, it was for about one hour this summer. And they have these winds, you know, and they have that wind come in sometime in the hot season, very dry. So all the dust was flying and this whirlwind came and was everything, nobody could see anything. And Mother Yashoda, she had put down baby Krishna and she couldn't see anything. She couldn't see what was happening when this whirlwind came into the Vrindavan. And that whirlwind came into Vrindavan, this Trinavarta, and look, baby Krishna is lying there. So Trinavarta, he somehow gets that baby to come into his whirlwind because initially Krishna had been very heavy to get Mother Yashoda to make him light, uh, to, uh, to get Mother Yashoda to put him down, he made himself very heavy. So after Mother Yashoda put him down, then the Trinavarta demon came. So that time Krishna became light because he wants Trinavarta to pick him up. He's going to go for a ride. Right? Krishna's a child and children like to play. You know, one of the things children like to do, like to go round and round. You know, sometimes we pick up children and we hold their hands and then we burrow round, we go round like that. And the children enjoy, they think, oh, this is great. And they, you know, sometimes you get a little boy, you know, you take their arms and you spin round with them and they're so happy. So Krishna had that mood also. He wanted to play. And he was, being, he was going to play with Trinavarta in the whirlwind. And Trinavarta, Trinavarta, of course, he doesn't think he's just going to play. He's thinking he's going to kill. He wants to kill Krishna. But, Krishna Maharaj, yes? 
I also heard related to this is when he came, as you said, it was a lot of dirt and um, dust uh, all around the atmosphere that everything was not clearly visible, kind of darkness also because things were not clearly visible. So as you said, in the mode of passion and ignorance, Krishna was not seen to anyone. So when we also go in mode of passion and ignorance, we will not be able to see Krishna. We have to come in mode of goodness. <laughs> that day because of dust and darkness, it's compared to mode of passion and ignorance. So Krishna yeah. was not seen. Wonderful point. Thank you very much. Yes, certainly passion and ignorance. The enemies. But Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. We can't even see in mode of goodness also, no? We have to raise to pure goodness. Yeah, we have to, we want to come up to pure goodness, yes, well, yes, that's the, the desire, but to get up to pure goodness, we should first come to goodness. Coming up, coming to goodness will help us to come to pure goodness. And the main point is get free of the passion and ignorance. Passion and ignorance are what really bind us. Of course, we don't want to get too much attached to the mode of goodness. We do want to ultimately transcend the mode of goodness. But Prabhupada said, generally, devotee will maintain the mode of goodness. We'll try to maintain the, the, mode of, the mode of goodness. And we definitely want to avoid the modes of passion and ignorance, because that is the real darkness. That's what creates the problems. So the modes of nature, very strong, very binding. The binding becomes even stronger as we go down, right? But as we come up to the mode of goodness, then it's a bit better. The binding is not so intense. It's better for us, right? Srimad Bhagavatam says, Evam prasana manaso bhagavad bhakti yogita. Thus established in the mode of goodness, the man gains liberation from material association and comes to know scientifically the personality of Godhead. So we do want to understand these modes of nature, definitely the, the darkness and the ignorance, the dust and the dirt. That's why it's so important, keep everything neat and clean. Prabhupada was always sh stressing these things. When he would come to temples, he would like to go through the temple and look and see everything. He wanted to check, are the devotees keeping everything neat and tidy? Are they folding up their beds in the morning and are they washing the floors? Are they keeping everything nice and clean? Especially in the temple, very, very important. You have deity or something, you have to keep the temple very, very clean. Cleanliness is next to godliness. So a Brahminical quality, right? Brahmins, we have to keep the Brahminical standard. Bathing regularly, that's important. And purifying our body, putting the tilak on. Don't just put tilak on the forehead, put tilak on all the different temples of the body. Regularly bathing two, three times a day and worshipping the deities, 